Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, it's good to see everybody here tonight. Uh, we're going to continue on our, 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 our teaching on a strongholds tonight. So let's, let's make sure that we uh, uh, get, you know, I mean, get what God has for us uh, on these uh, on these times of services. I really believe God has been speaking to us. So let's get our Bibles and let's get ready for the word tonight. Um, I want you to um, turn with me in your Bibles uh, this evening. I'm sorry. Yeah, this evening. Turn with me in your Bibles this evening. And uh, and we're going to turn to Matthew chapter... uh, No, Mark, I'm sorry. two scriptures Matthew 12 stick your finger in there verse 29 and then we're going to look at Mark chapter 3 Verse 27. All right, Mark, we'll start reading at verse uh, 23, all right? And then uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter 12, we'll read it as uh, it was spoken. Are you ready? Mark chapter 3, we'll read that one first, verse 24, 23, I'm sorry. It says, so he called them to himself, and uh, he called them to himself, and he said to them in the parables, he says, how can Satan cast out Satan? He said, if a kingdom is divided against himself, then the kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, the house cannot stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand but has an end. Verse 27 says, uh, no one can enter a strong man's house. This is our text here. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods Unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house. Surely I say to you, all sins will be forgiven, the son of men, and whatever blasphemies uh, they may utter. But he who blasphemy against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation. Because they said he has an unclean spirit, then his brothers and his mother came standing outside, and they said to him, call him. And a multitude sitting around him, they said to him, he says, look, your mother, brother outside seeking you. And he answered, who is my mother, who is my brother? And they looked around in a circle at those who sat about him and said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. And I want you to turn to Matthew. Matthew, verse 29. It kind of reads the same way. But I'm going to read it, start reading that verse 25, that Jesus knew their thoughts and he said, every kingdom that's divided against himself, we'll start reading at 25, I'm sorry. 
Every kingdom that divided against himself is brought to uh, desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can anyone enter a strong man house and plunder his goods unless he first binds a strong man? And then he will plunder his house. Amen. Uh, I want you to, to say to yourself, first, I have to bind the strong man in me. Amen. First, I will and have to bind the strong man that's in me. Amen. Uh, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, we're going to be all right. Sister, we're going to be all right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and be seated tonight. We've been in a series on teaching about strongholds, and tonight we're going to be dealing with uh, Satan devices, strongholds, breaking strongholds, and Satan devices. Devices. Uh, Satan uses different things uh, to really distract us and to trick us and to do different things to us to make us uh, stay in a place for a very long time. Can I hear you say amen? And sometimes as Christians, we don't understand that when he does this to us, he does it for one reason is to handicap you, bring a handicap into your Christian walk. He wants to bring something to slow you down, to stop you from doing what God has called you to do. And his goal is to get you to not pursue your destiny or stop you from reaching your destiny. The Bible teaches us that it's like a war. It's like a war. And the Bible says that every believer, I believe that every believer that we have here today and every believer that we have in the kingdom of God is in a spiritual war is in a spiritual war I believe that each and every believer in the kingdom of God has an adversary someone that is saying bad things against you or talking against you and and he may use other people to do it get this he may use other people to do it but it's his job to slow you down there was a time when Jesus began to speak about uh, going to the cross. And Peter stepped up and he said, uh, not you, Master, not you. You won't go to Jerusalem and die like that. I won't let that happen to you. And he told Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Here it is, a, a minister of the gospel, and, and, and one of the first people that was going to ever preach this wonderful gospel was told to get behind our master, our Lord, our Savior, get behind him. And, and he wasn't talking to Peter because Peter had no intentions of, 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 uh, of, of telling Jesus, uh, giving Jesus the wrong direction, but he was inspired by Satan. See, the word inspires us, but Satan will also inspire you too. With his words. Satan can inspire you with his words. I don't know about you, but if you haven't done certain things, certain things in my life, uh, if we can turn these on up here, certain things in my life um, I was inspired to do. I was, uh, I was, I was, in a sense, I was kind of tricked or inspired to do them. I thought something good would come about. Most of the sin in my life, I was inspired by somebody else to do it. So Satan kind of inspired Peter and, and what I mean by inspired him he he got him to a place I want you to catch this he got him to a place where he was walking with the Lord and he started telling the Lord what he was not going to do and it's so crafty Satan is so crafty because he'll he'll get you to say that you've got the Lord's back so much so strong 
that you would not go in the opposite direction. You won't leave him. You won't quit on him. But before you know it, Peter began to uh, 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 have this thought saying that he, he would do anything, that he would die for Jesus in the next few months, few days. He was already, you know what I mean, backslidden. So we find out that believers are in the war. And sometimes you're in the war and you don't even know that you're in the war. Stay with me here, people. We have an adversary. Peter says he roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may destroy. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to school you on this. It's because sometimes you think that, that, um, that the devil is really uh, kind of letting up on you. But I don't think that he lets up on us because there is demons. According to the scripture, there is demons assigned to each and every one of us. A sign. Now, I'm going to throw you for a loop here a little bit because there's some things that you've been hearing about this word that we're going to preach tonight that that's not true. You've, you've heard it preached and you've heard it said and, and, and sometimes you hear things and you don't study, then you'll find out that what you've been saying, that's why you have no uh, uh, authority over it because what you've been saying was in an incorrect way. It was like you, 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 you thought you had knowledge about something and you didn't have it. Mm, okay. All right. All right. The Bible tells us that, that Satan dispatches and he assigns perpetrators and wicked things and wicked spirits to come after us. Paul said it this way in Ephesians. He says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The problem ain't with our brothers or our sisters in the house of God. I said the problem is not with our brothers and sisters. The problem ain't within our marriage. The problem is that Satan has designed satanic forces. Because, listen to this, he doesn't see your destiny. He, 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 can't, he ain't that good, but, but he understands if you stay on the path, he knows where you're going. It's like I could, I could, I could know where, 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 where an individual is going if I can catch their direction. I can say you're gonna, if you're on 24th Street, you're gonna go past this store around the corner, and you're gonna, you're gonna run to the neighborhood store, and then you're gonna run across the boys and girls club, and you're gonna run. And, and so if you're on that, day, I can just about say where you're going. So if Satan sees where you're headed. And what direction and what route you're on and how you're connected, he can just about say, if, if he completes this, he'll make it to where he's trying to go. So he's not omnipresent and he's not, he's not, a, he's not one of those, he's not omniscient and all-knowing. But he understands if I can catch you on that path, I can just about say what you're trying to do. Come on, church, you got to get with me on this. You got to understand, if you saw your child on 24th Street, you'll tell them that say, hey, I know, what were you doing on 20? Are you going to the boys' club? you going to the store? you going to church's chicken? Where are you going? So Satan understands that. So he sends wicked things and wicked people and demons around us, and he assigns them to us, and they're not going to talk back to Satan. They're not going to come up with craftiness to come against him. They're not going to, um, how can I say this? They're not going to come up with schemes on how to quit Satan. They all on one accord. And they're not going to stop until the assignment is done. Stay with me here. So he knows where to assign them. The Bible says that Satan's job is to, is one of his characteristics, is uh, a few of them is to kill, steal, and destroy. There's three things that he does. And he has a routine that he harasses. He tempts. Hit and runs. Hello, somebody. He forces people out of territories. And then he does stuff like this. He brings them into a, a long time stronghold. You know what a long time stronghold is when you caught up for a long time. 
stay with me here. The Bible tells us that this stronghold is an influence to get a grip on you, to be persistent, to get you to be oppressed and obsessed with a lot of different stuff of the world, and then to hinder you, and then to bring har harassment when you think you're successful. So how do we deal with this? Well, we have to get to the root of the problem. One of the roots of the problem is this. The Bible says that it's hard for us to find Satan. Listen, it is working in our life because he disguises himself. He masquerades. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and 14, it says, and it's no wonder for Satan himself masquerades himself as an angel of light. So it's kind of hard for us if we don't study the word to show ourselves approved. If we don't study this word, we, 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 we find Satan masquerading himself around the things that we don't study. Things that we're ignorant to not knowing. And so what happens is this. Stay with me here. It's like having a cold and you, you have a runny nose. You only, you, and most of the time, we don't want our nose to run. Hello? How many of you have had a cold before, especially in this season, right? So if you get a runny nose, what are you going to do? You're going to grab some tissue. Why? Because your nose is going to keep running, so you just grab tissue. Are you taking anything to, to stop the running nose? Or most of the time, you don't take, you, 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 you get some decongested stuff to stop you from having a runny nose. But curing decongestant does not take away the cold. It just stops your nose from running. You still got a cold, but your nose stopped running. So what is the symptom? Well, 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 one of the symptoms of having a cold is a runny nose and fever and different stuff like that. But when you break down, you got, you got a virus. You got, you got something on the inside of you, right, that needs to be attacked, and it will stop all of that. But most of the time what we do is that we just attack the symptoms. We never get to the, the root of the problem. Well, Satan is the root of the problem. And most of the stuff that we do, listen to this, are only symptoms that he's operating in our lives. And most of the time we say, okay, we don't want drugs, we don't want alcohol, we don't want lust, and we don't want to do all of these bad things, and we don't want to be angry and all of this stuff. But the root of the problem is Satan trying to take over. Peter understood one thing is that when Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan, he understood one thing is that was this, is that he didn't want Jesus to die in Jerusalem like he said he was going to die. So there it was. He didn't even know that Satan, listen to this, that Satan had taken over his thought pattern. Satan is just that smooth that he could take over your thought pattern and you don't even know that he's done that. Stay with me here. I, I'll show you how smooth this is. Cunning. The Bible says that, that he's a cunning. He's, he's cunning. But Paul says this, is that we don't wrestle against this type of stuff. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Our family members and brethren and sisters and wives and employers and all these different things that we get so upset with that we try to figure out if I can get that taken care of, then I won't have these problems but you're only dealing with the symptoms because he's trying to harass you he's trying to mess up your mind into thinking that you'll never get a better job he'll tell you that your family is not good enough we don't get a chance to pick and choose our family in the kingdom of God come on come on come on because just like you don't have a chance to pick your family in the regular world I mean in the regular world you know what I mean when you're born you, you don't you don't you don't get a chance to pick your family some people wouldn't even be in your family if you had to pick them. Come on, talk to me. Some people wouldn't even be in your church. I probably wouldn't be here. Some of you would say, I, I didn't pick him to be my pastor. God, God put me here. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Come on, somebody. You, you, gotta just, you just got to love me through it. Hello, somebody. Amen. It's just that we didn't pick each other. If, if we picked each other, you know what we probably have? Everybody in here wouldn't have a testimony. I said everybody in here would not have a testimony because we, we don't want to go through nothing. 
We want to live a long life, but we don't want to go through nothing. Come on, talk to me just a little bit. I need you, I need you to push me just a little bit. So here we are. We find out that, that Satan is not what we think he is. Flesh and blood. So that means you need to stop getting so upset with your children and stop praying about it. Stop getting so upset with your life and start praying about it, your husband or your wife. It, it, it's not them. It's Satan that's attacking, that's harassing, that, that's, that's messing with them. So how do we get from the root of the problem to dealing with the strong man? Well, the Bible tells us, this is the tricky part. We go back to Matthew chapter 12, verses 29. The Bible says that Jesus refuted uh, this blasphemous argument that the, Sar the Sadducees was having about that he was Beelzebub. Come on, you got to get this so you don't, you don't get a misunderstanding here. He said that, they said that he was Beelzebub when he had cast this demon out of this crazy individual, this young kid. And, and all of a sudden they say, he must be the devil. And Jesus turned to them and said, hey, how can I be the devil casting out devils? And then he broke down saying that a house divided against itself will not, be, will not stand. Then he goes into the parable and he tells them this. And he says that, he says that if you're going to go into a strong man's house, one of the first things you got to do is bind up the strong man. Now, many people go on this rampage about binding and loosing. Well, what the Jewish people was doing back in those days, they would do something like this. And I, and I want you to understand this. They would, they, would, uh, they, would, they would say, this is okay to do in the house of God. And this is not okay. So that was their way uh, of binding and loosening. Because, listen to this. When they were on their way, to, uh, the apostles was trying to build the ministry. And here it was, at times they had to excommunicate people from the body of Christ. And they believed deep in their heart that, that moving forward, that moving forward was a way of saying that this is something that we need to do. So we, 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 we loose this into the church. And this is something that doesn't need to take place. So we bind this because that's what's bound in heaven. Stay with me here. This is going to get really tricky. It's like this is already bound in heaven, so we can't do this here on the earth. We can't do this in God's house. So this is already loosed in heaven, so, so we need to loose this in the church. All right, you got that? So this is already it's been mandated in heaven. So this is what's happening. So now we get to a place where Jesus tells the, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, he tells them, he says, hey, what you need to do is that if you're going to, if you're going to, uh, bind up the strong man the strong man has to first you have, when you're going to break in his house you got to break in and then bind him up now here it is he's saying that we realize the devil is defeated already in heaven we're going someplace with this so here on earth he's already defeated with God's people can he say amen now we don't need to have a strategy on how to defeat him He's already defeated. But get this, get this. He says that when Jesus says that first, if he was going to be with Satan, he wouldn't be casting out the devil. So this sets him apart right away and say, I ain't with the devil. I don't play games with the devil. I don't tag team with the devil. I don't have nothing to do with the devil. I don't have strongholds connected with me to the devil. I don't do, I don't play games with the devil. Because if I did, I would not be able to cast this demon out of this boy. Because the devil and his demons are one. Come on, stay with me here. The devil and his demonic spirits are one. So that means that they don't come against each other like some folks do. So Jesus gave an illustration that if you're going to break in this house, first... You got to get the strong man and bind him up because he's going to have other demonic spirits or other people, other evil presence to stop you from breaking in. His that means he's got folks watching out. 
And so if you get him, you got to bind him. Now, when you bind him, listen to this. That means that he can't get a loose. He's, he, 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 can't, he can't break out. He can't get away. Stay with me here. So Jesus said that when he bound him, it was not so that he could get something. He was binding him to set the captives free. Oh, you, you missed that. You missed that. It was all about souls. It wasn't about binding. and it was, This was about souls because he says, I came to set the captives free. If you're going to do anything, if you're going to bind the strong man, the first thing you got to do, if you're going to come to this earth, the first thing you got to do is that you got to bind up Satan. That was Jesus' job. That ain't your job. There's so many Christians walking around talking about, I bind you, Satan. You think Satan listen to you? How many times have you said, I bind you, Satan? I bind you, Satan. He kept doing whatever he was doing. See, you don't bind Satan. Jesus already did it. See, you, 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 you missed this. You missed. That's, that's why that comes from wrong teaching. You, you don't bind Satan. Satan has already been bound. You couldn't get free if Satan was running around doing what he wanted to do. He's limited in what he could do. He's limited to what he can do. Because what? It's already been done in heaven. What's going to happen in your life has already been done in heaven. What's, what, what, what God has spoken over your life, your destiny, your calling, all of this stuff has already been taken care of. But, but I want you to understand, if the binding, Satan wouldn't have never, listen to this, wouldn't have never happened, catch this, we all still be in bondage. And the reason why we're not in bondage any longer, listen to this, and we're only in bondage just because, some of us may be still in bondage, we're only in bondage because of our own thinking. So as a man think it, so when you think about this, you, you have to say to yourself that, that here it is, Jesus has is, gotten to a place where he says, Beelzebub is not going to come against, listen to this, Satan is not going to come against Satan. So if you're going to enter a strong man's house, the first thing you got to do is bind up the strong man. So if you want strongholds to be broken, one of the first things you got to do in your life is to bind, listen to this, is to bind up every act, satanic symptom. Because the cold is, Jesus is the cure to the cold. You got to miss that. Jesus is the cure to Satan, not you. He's given you the authority. To cast down, to cast out demonic spirits and all of those great things. Can you say amen? He's giving you the authority. You remember when he sent those disciples out and they came back all happy and excited because they did this in Jesus' name? Because he had given them authority. They couldn't do it on their own. But before they left, he gave them authority to cast out devils in his name. Mm. Stay with me here. You know, a lot of times when you, when, you, when you think about authority of the believers, the Bible says that sometimes people forget that they have authority. The Bible says in Mark 16, verses 17, he says, in my name, they will cast out demons. That means that any demon that's assigned to you, you should have authority over it. Any demon that's been assigned to you or any uh, demonic spirit, principality that's been assigned to you, the Bible says that you should take authority over it. Nobody can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. What happened? Jesus had to go in in order for us to get out. Hold it. Let me give you a better illustration. If Jesus hadn't have died there on the cross, there was no way for us to get into the holies of the holies. When Jesus was ripped, the veil was ripped. You didn't get this. When Jesus 
body was torn to pieces. The Bible says that when he died, the veil was ripped there in the place of the holies of holies. Now that we have total access of going in, he was that perfect sacrifice. So therefore, get a hold of this. Therefore, the strong man has been bound up. You have an opportunity to be the priest of your house. You have an opportunity to be the head of your house when Satan wouldn't let you do it before. Now the choice is yours. Come on, you got to get this, people of God. I, I, hope, I hope I'm making some sense here. Now the choice is yours. Jesus said, in my name, you're going to be able to cast out demons. You're going to be able to break strongholds and, and, and keep them broken. How are you going to do? Because I'm going to give you authority. I'm going to give you authority to go, listen to this, and break every stronghold inside of your life. How could you, how could you do these things? Because these signs are going to follow you. In my name, you'll cast out demons and you'll speak in new tongues. What, what is he saying here? In my name, you're going to cast out demons according to Mark 16 and 17 and speak in new tongues. It, see, the issue is that when you start speaking it's going to be a new language you speak after, come on, you cast out that demon. You shouldn't be talking the same way. You shouldn't be doing the same because if, you, if you're speaking the same language something's wrong with you. You need to ask God like David said test me Lord and see what's on the inside of my heart if you're speaking the same language of old. You have to exercise authority in the name of Jesus to expel demonic oppression. You got to say to yourself, hey, hey, devil, I, I, I know you're here and I know you assigned demons towards me. But listen, I'm going to deal with all of these symptoms that are around me because Jesus has already dealt with you. Come on, you got to get this. Death, hell, and the grave, we can't handle that. Jesus had to handle that. Can he say symptoms that you're having? With the authority that God has given you. How can I do that? Well, well, one of the things is intercession. You need to come together with other believers and intercede against strongholds that you can actually see among kingdom believers you, you, you see the problem that a lot of people have is this a lot of people like to go uh, they don't like to deal when God gives you a church when God gives you a church I want you to get this it's your church whether you knew or old it's still your church and when you identify demonic strongholds and different things you those things have to be dealt with otherwise it'll stop the church from reaching its total destination It'll stop people from getting to where God wants them to be. Come on, you got you to stay with me here. Now, how, how, how is that going to happen? Well, we, we come together to pray. Like I said earlier, you, you can't choose your brother and sister in Christ. They said like you couldn't choose your brother and sister in the world. Another one is this, displacement. Jesus had already dealt with the devil. Now what you got to do is this, is that that place where you cast out that demon in your life or you cast out those strongholds in your life and you, 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 you brought that stuff down to uh, uh, your struggle and you, you cast this thing down out of your life, I want you to understand displacement is this, is that you've got to replace it with the Spirit of God. You can't just take, listen to this, you can't take satanic things out of your life and then replace it with nothing. The Bible says that when you clean the house, come on somebody, and the enemy is going to come back a little while, can he say amen, to check and see if everything is cleaned up and, you, and, and you're doing the right thing. He's going to come back and pay you another visit. The same thing that you tried to overcome to see if you're strong enough to hold them off. So, so what am I saying to you? You got to replace it with things that's going to make you stronger. I said you got to replace it with things... That makes you stronger. We have no one man armies in the kingdom of heaven. Can I hear you say amen? The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 32 and 30. It says that one could put what? A thousand and ten could put what? And two could put ten thousand. I'm sorry. So, so here it is. You find out that an accessory would help us to get stronger because one could put a thousand and two could put ten thousand. So if, if the church really understood this, that means that if we had war, that means that, you know what, if two of us could pray, we could put ten thousand demons on the run. 
10,000 demons on the road. But there's a lot of people that won't pray. They're, they're too busy trying to bind the devil, but the symptoms are taking them over. It's like you, 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 if we can take care of the devil, what did Jesus have to come for? So he's giving you authority. He's saying that, you know what, you need to come together and pray. If I can get two of you to touch and agree, there I am in the midst. Come on, one could put 1,000, two could put 10,000 on the run. Display, that means that, you listen to this, that displacement means that, you know what, wherever there was demonic uh, uh, darkness at, listen to this. The Bible tells us that wherever there was darkness at, you need to replace it with light. Now, how can I do that? Well, I'm a treasure out of darkness. So if I'm a treasure out of darkness, that means that wherever I am and wherever God has me, I've got to fill it up, come on, with light. Can I hear you say amen? I can't be around my brothers and sisters acting like I'm not the light. Regardless of what your symptom of belief is, because, you know, a lot of you say that you, you got different ways of believing. But, but then you, you, you get to a place where you start struggling and you're starting to think that, man, I'm, I'm going to get to heaven regardless and this, that, and that, the other. But I'm here to tell you, I'm, tell, I'm trying to tell you something. Wherever, if you came out of darkness, the Bible says that that place should be full of light. It should be full of light. You have to, uh, uh, it has to be a displacement. You got to fill it up with God's presence. Can I hear you say amen? Second Corinthians chapter six, verse 14 says this. For what fellowship righteousness has with lawlessness and what communion has uh, a light with darkness? That means that you can't be hanging out and playing games, harsh talk and, and all kinds of stuff and being mean and all of this. Thing. You can't do that because God brought you out of that and you've got to fulfill the plan of God for your life so Satan tries to trick you as what as 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 a person of light listen to this but he's not a person of light when he gets you to say different things that's contrary to the word of God he wants you to hang around different people that doesn't please God he wants you to get that he wants you to get that type of language on the inside of you to mess you up The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 13, uh, 17 says this. But whoever, uh, it says, whenever anyone turns to the Lord, listen to this, the veil is taken away and the Lord, listen to this, now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Come on, you, you, you ought to give the Lord praise for that. The Bible says that the veil is lifted in half. You have total access. And he says now you have freedom because you have me. The only thing that you have is symptoms of a cold. Something that seems like Satan has gotten you. But he don't have you because he's been already bound in the heavens. Come on somebody. You got to get this. Come on holler at your boy. You got to get this because sometimes we're thinking that Satan is after us. The only thing that you have is a symptom. Because listen to this. Satan is not after you. He's after the whole city. He's after the whole world. He's the prince of the world and we used to be a part of this world who we used to be a part of can he say amen so what am I saying to you we, we, we have to learn that when we're binding stuff first listen to this you go after the symptoms because the only thing left is symptoms because Satan is already defeated symptoms I said symptoms because he's defeated. He's a defeated foe. He, he understands what's going on. And, and, and the thing it is is that just because you have symptoms, you got a head cold or, 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 or you're struggling with drugs or you're this and that. But God says he came to set what? The captives free. How long can Satan hold on to you till you make up your mind? How long can Satan hold on to your marriage till you make up your mind? How long can Satan hold on to your kids until you make up your mind that I am the righteousness of God and the enemy cannot over no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Any tongue that rises up shall be condemned. Listen to me, my friend. I'm telling you, you have to make up 
up in your mind because when you start thinking it, then you start believing it. I'm here to tell you, if you start thinking somebody don't like you, then you start believing that. Then you start treating that person that way. But if you believe that you are the righteousness of God, then you go ahead and walk that way. You go ahead and talk that way. You step out that way because the enemy has been bound already. Come on, give God praise. I said give him praise. I said he's bound already. Only thing you got is a symptom. God ain't at, listen to this. God ain't going to leave the devil up to you. Last time he did that, Adam fell. Because he was too cunning. Had him eating stuff that he knew that was forbidden in heaven. You missed that. He had him doing things that he knew that was forbidden. He was doing things that was forbidden. So when he was binding things, how could you bind something that heaven, listen to this, that you're operating with? You can't say, I'm, 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 I'll put it like this, give it to you this way. You can't hate your brother or your sister and then say you're binding Satan. You can't, you can't get to a place where you don't want to be involved with ministry and don't pay your tithes, and then all of a sudden you're telling Satan, I rebuke you, devourer. You can't, you can't do that because the reason why is that how could you partner with Satan one day and the next day try to cast him out? You can't do that. Satan ain't going to, he's not going to fear nothing like that. So what do you got to do? You got to resist him. Stay with me here. This is the next point. It says, therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. That's what James says in chapter 4 and verse 7. See, see, you, you got to tell the devil, you can't come back. Come on. Hey, come on. Come on. Come on. You got to get this. I know he wants to come back when he see you all cleaned up. When he see you looking all magazine he see your marriage is all good. He, come on, come on, you got to get this. He sees, he sees what God has done for you and how your bills are caught up, your credit's getting right and all of that stuff. But you got to tell the devil, you can't come back. You can't come back. And the reason why you can't come back, because I got a ministry to build. I got folks I got to reach. I got things that I got to do. I cannot allow you to come back in my life and put those things back on me. Because now I'll be hesitant of what God's called me to do. Come on, somebody say amen. How is he going to flee? Well, he ain't going to run to you. He ain't going to run from you unless you're a yielded Christian. He ain't going to run from you unless you're a praying Christian. He ain't going to run from you unless you're a fasting Christian. He ain't going to run from you unless you're a worshiping Christian. He ain't going to run from you unless you're a humble Christian. He ain't going to run from you unless you're a follower. Come on, come on. You're following God. He's not going to run from you unless you're an obeying Christian. That's what gets the devil on the run. I said, that's what gets the devil on the run. When you start resisting him and tell him, you can't come back. Come on, talk to me. Come on, talk to me. You, you got to understand, Satan has to know that he can't come back. I don't care how pretty she looks. I've been there and done that. Can't come back. I don't care how handsome he looks. I already, I've already been a fornicator. I, I, I can't do that no more. Come on, talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me, church. Come, those that are online, you got to tell the devil, I, I, I can't do that. I, I, you can't come back. You have to submit yourself. That means that whatever the word of God says do, that's what I permit. Come on. I, I said that's what I loose. Because why? Heaven is okayed it. Now, therefore, I okay it. I speak it into existence. I start saying things that is not as though they should be. Hello, somebody. It may not be happening right now, but heaven says it's okay. So I, and now the devil says, come on, come on. He tries to trick me as being in the light. But no, it ain't okay with heaven. So I loose it. Somebody say loose it. We've got to loose things in the house of God, people. How do you do it? You come together in agreement and prayer. You start resisting the devil. Some of you, 
Listen to this. You got to learn how to start resisting the devil. I'm going to tell you how you can get this real quick. You know how you can resist the devil? Because I, I know you, uh, many of us had this feeling. Somebody say, oh, I got a feeling. That's what James Brown said. I got a feeling. I got the feeling. That's what he said. Stay with me here. You ever been so upset you felt that thing coming on? Now, how could you resist it when you feel it? How could you resist it when you feel it? Well, I'll tell you how you can resist something that you feel. See, if you were to displace God, listen to this. If you were to put God in this right perspective place, when it's time to resist, you feel his presence and you feel the strength. Come on, the strength of God, you'll be able to do it because you can't do it without his presence. Whose presence is the strongest? Whose presence is the strongest? That, that, you, you, you ever been uh, so upset that you didn't know what to do? We all get that way. How do you start learning how to control it? Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. How could I get freedom from anger? Well, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. What did, what did Jesus tell Joshua when fear tried to take over his ministry? He told him, he says, he says, meditate on this word day and night. Why? Because fear was trying to grip him from taking millions of people to the other side, to the promised land. And I'm here to tell you, that's what, come on, that's what uh, satanic oppression will do to you. Will stop you from moving millions of people to freedom. That's what it'll do. When we get angry, it'll stop whole families from becoming what God has called them to do. Think of Barack Obama. Born in Kenya, Africa. All messed up. Street, walking around the street of Chicago after he got into, uh, uh, left Kenya. Stay with me here. Born, weighed over there, oppressed and all of that stuff. Found a way to get into Harvard. I don't know the whole story, but you got to think about it. His daddy didn't know who he had in that house in Kenya. Never knew. Think of that. Michelle Obama, growing up on the south side of Chicago. Mama didn't know who she had in that house. My mama, eight kids, didn't know who she had in that house. Didn't know who she had. Everybody said that he's going to turn out just what we see. But when Satan has already been bound, you treat the symptoms and then you begin to, come on, you begin to call those things that are not as though they were supposed to be in your life. You're supposed to be victorious. You're supposed to be a winner. Don't let symptoms keep you in your bed. Don't let symptoms keep you from being the best you that you can possibly be. Don't let others that tell you that you're not capable and you're not good enough to be the best you can be. Many of you, Satan works overtime just to mess with your thinking system. If you could have defeated Jesus, I mean Satan, God would have sent you. But imagine how many times God would be mad at you right about now. Just imagine, you're at the liquor store, over that boy house, over that girl house. See, we lose strength because of what we don't know about the word. We lose strength, and Satan just keeps strategizing, keeps strategizing to keep us in bondage. Reason why I'm saying that, I was, I was a self-held prisoner. Nobody held me but me. Can I preach to you about being self-held? 
from a child, I did what everybody else wanted me to do in the street. Whatever they could talk me into. I bet you can't drink all of that. Bet you can't smoke all of that. Bet you can't steal that. Bet you can't get her phone number. Bet you can't do this. Bet you won't shoot over there in that crowd. Satan influence. He knows who to get you to do that stuff. You know, some of my friends, they went to prison. But God kept me out. Get this. Some of them had children out of wedlock. Some of them, it, it, was, it was just a mess when I look at my life and how people tricked me into doing things and how we come into the house of God. We act like we ain't got no sense. Come on, people. You get what I'm saying. We act like we don't have sense. God didn't already bound up the strong man. Moving forward has already been loosed in heaven. Everything you need to move forward has been loosed in heaven. Whatever you reach up and grab is going to be yours. Whatever you believe that you can become is going to be yours. And I know the devil works overtime and says, you believe that? You believe that? Well, that's what the word of God says, and it hasn't let me down. And over, you mean 27 years, 25, 27 years, the God has never let me down. And, and the thing it is, is that whatever I bind, it's already bound in heaven. Listen, it's already been okay to cast it out of my life. So that means that heaven is a partner with me when I bind things. Jesus bound Satan. He died on the third day. God rose him from the dead. The veil has been ripped in half. We have total assets. Every scar, listen to this, the Bible says it's for our healing, but also those scars, I want you to catch this. Every time when they hit him, listen to this, and he died, those, those, those rips was one of the rips that caused the veil and the temple to be what? Torn in two. Now get this, we have total assets of going in there. How do, we, how do we get there? It's because of what happened to Jesus on the cross. And I want you to get this, people of God. This is, this is something that you need to know. The reason why you don't have what you really want is because you're not taking authority. You got to take authority over it. And sometimes God will use your effort over your words. How bad do you want it? Because we've lost the privilege of using our words, so we got to use his word. Yeah. Our word doesn't count. <laughs> Get this. How many times have you gave people your word and then you had to change it? So we can't use your word no more. You got to use God's word because his words never change. So therefore, stay with me here. When I'm doing ministry and I'm moving forward, that's why they was able to give their life. And the reason why they was giving their life is because they found out that Satan was bound and he was bound in the heaven and they understood his future, how he's going to be bound then and locked. Come on, come on you got to get this. He's going to be bound and thrown into the pits. All of this stuff is going to happen. But they, they understood that that was been taken care of. So the only thing that they're dealing with is symptoms, tricks, snares, disguises, all of this stuff to stop you, to slow you down. But if we know that, why do we still let us hinder us? Why do we let him hinder us? Close your eyes for a second. It's called a stronghold. He don't want to let you go. Stay with me here. I want you to understand. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27 says, the scripture says, give no place to the devil. Don't play with him. Don't partner with him and then try to cast him out later. See, when Satan has departed, 
you got to fill that void with God's presence. So when you need the strength, you've been meditating on the word like Joshua because he needed strength, he needed courage. Fear was trying to stop him from leading millions of people. He was about to say no. Joshua needed courage. Whenever you need courage, know it's on your mind. Keep those eyes closed. Give no place. Don't let the devil occupy what belongs to God. If it's ministry, don't let the devil occupy your ministry. Don't let him occupy anything that belongs to God. Don't let him do that to you. Now build yourself a stronghold like David did, a place where you can run in, a place where you could be safe. Daily put on the full armor of God that you'll be able to withstand the tricks and the snares and the wiles of the devil. Didn't say the devil. It didn't say the devil. It didn't say the devil. It said the wiles, the tricks. The devil plays tricks on us. But Jesus had to deal with Satan. And he bound him. So what Satan does is he plays games with our minds. And before you know it, you don't give God 100. You know what you give God? What you got left. What you do is this. I want you to stand on your feet and say that I'm not going to let the devil occupy no more land, no more territory, no more space. I'm not going to be a self-held prisoner. I'm not going to allow the enemy to trick me. Fortify yourself. That means clothe yourself. That's your defense. Clothe yourself with the truth. Faith. Come on, the sword. Shoes. Clothe yourself with the, with the, uh, the chest breast, I mean the, 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 the breastplate. And then also with the helmet of salvation. Fortify yourself. That's your defense. When you put it all on, you'll be able to stand against the devil's wiles. Realize this. Satan is only trying to trick you out of what God has for you. Stay with me here. What's in the strong man's house? Souls. What are we after? Souls. Who are we supposed to be reaching? The loss. What does Satan do? He, he, he captures them. What was Jesus anointed for? To set the captives free. What is every ministry? Come on, don't clap yet. What, what, what is every ministry we have to set the captives free? Every ministry. From the ushers to the from the from the from the from the from the, from the, the gang to the to the men and the men and women uh, uh, to the to the to the uh, women's home, all of that stuff. Mighty men of valor. It's all about souls. It's not about who could get the most people. It's about how many souls can you win? How many souls can you leave out of captivity? How many young people that sprung out on those pills that over in Johnson County can we lead out of captivity? Off 24th Street, can we lead out of captivity? How many women can we lead out of captivity? Because Jesus said it like this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to do what? To preach the gospel. Right? And then he talks about what? The captives being set free. You ain't doing ministry unless you're winning souls. Ministry is not about a song. Ministry is not about instruments. Ministry is not about... All of that stuff is developed to win souls. That good time, God has no use of that good time if it can't win a soul. He has no use of these pianos and the drums if it can't win a soul. 
It's all about when you're playing those drums, it's about winning a soul. Somebody's going to hear that beat and say, man, I got to get right with God. Somebody is going to hear that piano, they're going to hear that song, and they're going to want to get right with God. That's God's intention. We don't have one-man armies. Satan has been defeated, but we're being tricked. And some of you have been tricked out of your very own household. Be careful. Lift your hands right where you are. Jesus said that I've come that you may have life and life more abundantly. I've come that, did he say that I've come that you may fight the devil? No, he said I've come to give you life. Everything the strong, the man, strong man has of yours, he's got to give it up. Everything that he has of yours, he's got to give it up. Your kids, he's got to give it up. Your family, your marriage, come on, your ministry, your church, anything that he has that belongs to you, you have authority to take it back. Occupation, give the devil no foothold. Don't partner with him. They tried that one on Jesus, and Jesus gave them the, he gave them the demo. He says, hey, how could Beelzebub cast out Beelzebub? That ain't happening. I cast out Satan. That's what I did. I, cast, I bind it up what? Satan. That's what Jesus did. When you go back and you read that, you'll find out that Jesus binded up the strong man, and he was talking about the souls, the souls being set free. I dare you to come to this altar before you do it. Get this. I want you to know why you're coming. Hold it. Hold it. I want you to know why you're coming. Because I want you to start dealing with the struggle that only you have. Not worry about your neighbor, but only you have. Make up in your mind that when you come and say, God, I've been dealing with this. And now it's my time. I, 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 give me the authority to get rid of it. If that's you, I want you to come. Don't be afraid about what other people are going to think. You get here. Get here. See, one of the problems is that we take too long when you know you got it. We all have demons that have been signed to us. And I'm here to tell you, I've got to fight them every day. Sometimes you can't even get your life straight now because of what you're fighting. It's a daily process. You're fighting strongholds. You're fighting for your, for your life. You're fighting for your kid's life. You're fighting to make the right decisions. You're fighting. And the enemy is not letting up. You was never created to defeat the devil. Jesus was created to do that. That's what Jesus came down here for. That's not your job. Your job is to live this great life and to do ministry the way God has called you to do it. Your, your, your job is to worship him because of what he has done for you. Your job is to believe, to trust, to use that authority, to cast down imaginations. Because all of these things are going to try and stop you from doing what God has called you to do. And try to hold you captive as long as you don't know that you've got the authority. And you start resisting the devil, you're going to find out that he ain't tougher than you. He ain't better than you. He ain't stronger than you. He ain't, he ain't, come on, he ain't stronger than you. You start praying for your children. You start praying. Come on, that, that thing start to, come on. You start praying for those young people. You start praying for different people before you know it. Things start happening. Those that are watching online, lift those hands up and begin to say, you know, I declare freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I am free indeed. I have authority over the strong man in my life. He cannot control me. I control my destiny. Jesus has given me power over the enemy. And here I am. What used to be bound I used to be all messed up, 
But now, because he has given me authority, it had to let me go. It had to let me go. It had to let me go. The grip of sin and the stronghold of sin has been broken. I dare you to proclaim it. Say it's been broken. Come on, anger has been broken. Come on, poverty has been broken. Come on, dare you, shout it out. Hey, the stronghold is gone. It's wrong. It's out of my house. It's out of my mind. I'm no longer a kept prisoner. I'm free. I have the power and authority to call those things that are not as though they should be. Heaven is behind me. Oh, so whatever I bind, it's already been bound in heaven. And whatever I loose, it's already been loose. So I'm here to tell you, start loosing those things that should be happening in your life. Start loosening those things that should be happening in your life. I dare you to do it. People cannot get free until we get free. My job is to tell you that Satan is already bound. He's only been tricking you for the last many years of your life. And he's trying to trick you out of the rest of your life. It's a done deal. He tried it with man once before man fell. Man fell. So he sent Jesus. Jesus took care of the business. Look at those hands. It's a done deal. If you believe it, it's a done deal. Don't give him back what he stole from you and got, you God gave it back to you. If he stole your mind and you got your mind back, don't give it back to Satan. Don't give him the foothold. Took you a long time to get it. That grip is loosening. You keep on speaking what heaven wants. The Jewish people understood one thing. Whatever happened in heaven, whatever God is okayed for the church, it's already okayed for the church. If somebody's doing something out of line, heaven didn't already decree it's a bad thing, so it's not going to bear fruit. But when we try to move forward, God says that, you know what? I'm loosening that thing from the heavens to your house, from the heavens to your job, to the heavens for your deliverance. From the heaven, he's already, he, 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 he knew where he called you from. So it wouldn't be right for God to bring you into the house of God and not deliver you. Come on, somebody. You got to know that you're free. You got to know. If God calls you, you got to say, hey, 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 I'm a free man. And you got to start walking in it. No matter what you feel. God called you to ministry regardless of how many times you blew it. You say, hey, God knew that. So what does he do? What does he do? He calls you to ministry. Then he gives you an anointing and the power to deal with those symptoms, to break yokes, to deal with those symptoms. Not the devil, just symptoms, tricks. Because you can't fool with the devil. Don't even play that game. Lift those hands. He's a defeated foe. You ain't got to worry about him. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Lord, make me over. 
Can somebody come and sing that for me up here? We're going to be all right. Oh, make me over. Make me over again. Make me Deal with the symptoms. God is our cure. What Jesus did on the cross. That was good enough. What you got to do. Stand. God would have never brought you this far to leave you like that. Hallelujah. I'm not what I want to be and I'm not what I used to be. I may be still struggling but God brought me here to deliver me. God brought me here so that I could find myself, get myself together. God gave me a word so I would be able to stand. Hallelujah. One more time, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, you've done all the work. It's been already done. All we've got to do is stand and see the salvation of the Lord. That's all we've got to do is stand. I thank you, Lord, for making the load easy for me. Sometimes I may have to get rid of some things in my life, but it's nothing compared to what you had to do. So I thank you for binding up Satan. Tying his hands so I can get free. That I may get free. Come on, somebody. Somebody ought to give him praise for tying him up. Binding him up. So I can get free. Your children can get free. Your ministry can get free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, lift those hands. Are you excited? Give God praise. Say, oh my God. I still be lost. I'll still be bound. I'll still be messed up if it had not been for the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. God bless you on the night. Listen, we're free. God would have never brought you to this church if he wasn't going to deliver you. That's been his plan. That's been his plan. Great things are going to happen. Great things are going to happen. 
Don't allow yourself to get caught up by Satan. No more. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you guys. God bless you. You consider yourself dismissed.